I don't know. We're supposed to look at it and then see if it looks like the way it looked before, but I wasn't here, so I don't know what it looked like before. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. You're you're operating the machine, so you might as well get in the picture, right? Well, I haven't got anything to do with it. Well, you're carefully monitoring all of the parameters, right? That's right. I'm watching all the gauges, making sure that everything looks the way it should. Well, that's great. See, that adds a lot to it rather than just taking a picture of a panel. This is the way it gets this time in the afternoon. And you think that's funny? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> that's quite one of the most interesting things to focus <laughs> these cameras on. <laughs> and, and well, I suppose we should photograph something that we're being paid to. Okay. Well, you lead on, Bill. And, and here we have some people doing work. That's a rare, rare thing. We better capture that on film, also. Well, what we've done differently, nothing but sarcasm around We've here. added, we have the carbon, uh, carbon cast on, carbon cast on with no hole, and we've just finished running two hours of having one ACS limiter on VR. Right? Now, the difference this time versus the original uh, baseline test was that the limiter was on the back of the sample, SMA connector. Now it's attached to the other end of the internal cable that runs to the, and uh, to the side plate. Yeah, so it's running just on the other side of the penetration plate at the end of that one foot cable. And the behavior was still looks similar to the behavior in the original test, so we decided for convenience to keep testing it that way. It's easier to get access to it. And now we hope it's going to. Uh, Put in the second limiter on BL. And on. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Just another view. Yeah, turn you guys in. No, go away. I think they're a pound and a half. This is the business end of the yeah. beam machine. See this window in the This is all that. This is where the beam comes out of it. It goes through that. Well, how thick is it? Well, it's not very thick. It's probably. Is there any of that? I don't know if you can come in and clean it up. Is that good? Hey, look at that. Just open. Ah, so. And then you walk in. And then you hang it here. And then you take the point like this. Well, this is a view of the unit under test in the chamber and on the right hand side you can see the 
cable going to the penetration pipe. And the white area you see is the uh, multi-layer insulating radome. The close-up view showing a better view of the penetration plate where the cabling comes through and also the mounting position for the limiter. Okay, this is Milt installing the uh, limiters and the cabling on the unit. Yeah, I need that. Uh This is a, another view of the unit installed in the test chamber looking from the side port where the penetration plate is installed and the cables are uh, uh, just sitting there at the moment. So. Remember which way was mm -hmm. the closest? I can see that from the A view of the vacuum system underneath the test chamber showing the diffusion pumps and mechanical pump. We're using a remote located mechanical pump to reduce vibrations. This is a vacuum system control. All right, Bruce, this is an action shot. <laughs> Three one million electron volts. The view of the see-throughs and uh, shows the position of the uh, DC blocks and the way we have them installed on the uh, penetration plate. Uh, if I can get a little closer, we can read it. That's serial number three attached to the B sub uh, R output and serial number four on the B sub L. Let's see. Here we are. We're heading into the particle accelerator room. Oh, and the light's off. Oh, well. I don't know where the light switch is. Oh, it's amazing how much you can see within the video camera, though. I'm at the end of the uh, uh, room here. I know. You like to work in the dark. You ought to take a picture of that when the, when the lights are off. Oh, look. Danger high voltage. Oh, oh that would be neat. Yeah. That so it's uh, when it's on, yeah. Open that. It's not yeah, every day you great. get to see stuff like this. No. I don't know what it is. Excuse me, I'll get the lights. That's power tubes. Where is the power around here? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the oscillate for that uh, is the 
primary energy source for the, uh, well, at least it's the beginning of the uh, particle accelerator. It's not the main energy source. Things get accelerated, but I guess it starts here with, I guess this is, I don't know, in the 100 kilohertz range. But there's a lot of neat tubes in here, that's for sure. And cooling, water-cooled plates. This is a part of the cooling system down below. And, uh, pretty neat looking stuff. Okay, this is looking into the inside of the dynamotron and you can see the corona rings and uh, the vacuum tubes, uh, vacuum tube diodes. This is just a view of the magnet room where the beam is uh, bent by a, a powerful magnet and uh, goes through a right angle bend and then into the beam room where we do the experiment. Uh, the electron beam comes through right here and this particular apparatus, although we're not using it, is used to modulate the position of the beam and can cause it to be deflected. <coughs> this is the, where the beam comes through the wall and then into the room where our experimental chamber is located. So quadrupole focusing on coils for the beam and the magnet. Another view of the magnet room, looking where the beam is deflected. Vacuum system. This is where the beam comes out of the accelerator before it passes through the magnet. <coughs> 